Canadian wildfires continue to burn with 461 climate change-related infernos raging as of Wednesday evening, with 236 of those being classified as out of control. These fires, as my listeners know, are all caused by fossil fuels, which are heating up the planet, resulting in less snow and rain during the winter, followed by drier and hotter summers. New data shows parts of America's West are now experiencing what is termed fire weather conditions twice as often as they did back in the 1970s. Fire season is now two months longer than it was 50 years ago. As for Canada, smoke from their forest fires continues to blanket nearly half the population here in America, as climatologists say this is the new normal. Scientists are now saying that until these fires are put out, we can expect more days like we had here in New York last week, where children and people with respiratory conditions were ordered to stay indoors. But Republicans have bigger things to worry about. I mean, who cares about the planet only having five years left when transgender activists are getting paid to endorse Bud Light. No, it's not the oil companies that are threatening our little children. It's Bud Light. It's Bud Light. That's the biggest threat. Bud Light. Bud Light is normalizing how people were born. Bud Light is normalizing how people were born. Conservatives and Republican politicians have called for a boycott of Bud Light and it's starting to work. Bud Light is no longer the number one beer in America. Up until last month, 10% of all beer sales were made by Bud Light. But after the boycott, it dropped down to 8.7%, moving Modela Espacial, a Mexican beer, into the top spot. A Mexican beer is now the number one selling beer in America, thereby proving bigots are ignorant losers. You try to punish the LGBTQ community, and you end up rewarding a group of people you hate just as much, Mexicans. There are roughly 13 million Southern Baptists here in America. It's the second largest Christian denomination in the United States. In 1995, the Southern Baptist Convention issued an official apology for some of the positions it took back took since its founding in 1845. It was founded in 1845 in Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, they had to apologize. You see, it was founded as a breakaway movement after Baptists were divided on slavery. So in 1845, the Southern Baptists broke away in favor of slavery. They were, for, they were for the secession, and after they lost the Civil War, the Southern Baptists promoted the canard that the old Confederacy was about preserving a genteel way of life. The Southern Baptists supported segregation, Jim Crow laws, and of course, they opposed interracial marriage. It did, oddly enough, have no problem with abortion. But that changed in the 70s, in the 1970s. They became pro-life when they could no longer be openly hostile to black people. In the 70s, they had a pivot towards demonizing sex because the Civil Rights Acts of 64 and 65 made the racism too unpalatable to most Americans. So now the Southern Baptists oppose sex. They're against abortion and they're against the LGBTQ community. They oppose same-sex marriage. This week, the Southern Baptists held their annual convention in Louisiana, and by a two-thirds majority, they voted to remove three churches for having female pastors. 
They also approved an amendment to their constitution. And remember, this passed with a two-thirds majority. They passed a, a new amendment to their constitution forbidding all Southern Baptist churches from having female pastors. The Virgin Mary, not allowed to work for United States Southern Baptists. Not allowed. The Virgin Mary would not be allowed to be a pastor. Well, what organization in America is allowed to say, we're not hiring women? Where else could that possibly be legal? But wrap yourself in the Bible, and you can make women or members of the LGBTQ community second-class citizens. How is it possible that we allow the Southern Baptist Convention to call itself a religion, not have to pay taxes, and they can openly say we're not hiring women? You see, abortion isn't about protecting the lives of the unborn. The Southern Baptists couldn't give a shit about the unborn. This is all about subjugating women. And if you don't believe me, Google Stephen Crowder's divorce. The religious right doesn't stop with abortion because it didn't start with abortion. This is about subjugating women. It's about getting rid of no-fault divorce so women can't leave their husbands when they want. It's a return to the legalization of marital rape, which up until the 70s, a husband was free to do with his wife whatever he wanted. If you think I'm overreacting, you're not paying attention to the enemy. The far right is run by sexually frustrated, angry little men who hate women almost as much as they hate themselves. They want to punish women for the power that women have over them. Now... This is the 21st century, and the Southern Baptist Convention, by a two-thirds majority, voted, we're not hiring women. No female pastors. How is this normal? How is this legal? Well, in America, you can break any law so long as you say, it's my religion. You know, up until a few years ago, you could molest a child as long as you were a religious leader. Because, hey, religious freedom, who, were, who is the state to decide what's right and what's wrong? Know your enemy. In Poland, thousands of citizens took to the streets this week to protest Europe's strictest anti-abortion laws. Since January of 2021, Poland's far-right government has instituted a near-total ban on abortion except in the case of rape and incest or if the mother's life is endangered. But good luck proving that the mother's life is endangered. The law forbids fetal abnormalities from being a legal excuse for an abortion. So many women are reportedly dying in Poland they're dying because they're being forced to bring these fetuses to term. Protesters are saying women's lives are in danger because Polish doctors are afraid of getting arrested. So they wait too long to terminate a pregnancy that is threatening the life of the mother. The far right agenda. Conservatives love unborn babies, so they say. Almost as much as they love Daniel Penny, the ex-Marine who placed a homeless African-American into a chokehold and killed him aboard a New York City subway back on May 1st. On Wednesday, a New York City grand jury indicted Penny on second-degree manslaughter for the murder of Jordan Neely, an African-American street performer who was homeless at the time. Penny, white, insists he acted in self-defense and that Needy, Neely Black was threatening the lives of other passengers. Penny, did I mention he's white, could face 15 years in prison. His lawyers have raised more than $2.5 million from 47,000 individual donors, including Kid Rock, 
They raised it on the crowdfunding site Give, Send, Go. The Supreme Court is wrapping up its term and is expected to hand down a major decision that could put an end to affirmative action when it comes to college admissions here in the United States. The court heard an argument filed by a conservative group charging that colleges like Harvard are discriminating against white people and Asian Americans by taking into consideration race when deciding who they accept. Now, nine states, Arizona, California, Florida, Idaho, Michigan, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, and Washington have already banned college admissions officers from taking race into consideration. Be interesting to see what the court rules. We have a lot of beneficiaries of affirmative action sitting on the Supreme Court, like Justice Clarence Thomas. But you know what the solution to all this is? Free tuition at all public universities. That's the solution. And convincing parents and students that just because a college is hard to get into, that doesn't make it good. You know, England and America are the only ones obsessed with these elite private schools where basically your children, well, I'm not going to say what happens to the, to the children at these elite private schools. You know, the rest of the world just educates their children. In America and Great Britain, we're obsessed with an elite education. Well, remember when women decided they didn't need men to have a baby? Well, pretty soon we're not going to need women or humans to have babies. The Independent reports this morning that scientists from the University of Cambridge and California Institute of Technology have grown a synthetic embryo in a Petri dish without sperm or an egg using nothing but stem cells, a bottle of wine, and Beyonce's partition playing on the radio. As if Elon Musk doesn't have enough legal problems, he's now being sued by a group of 17 music publishers for $250 million. They're claiming Twitter has done nothing to stop the illegal sharing of music on his social media platform. Well, he can't stop the sharing of child pornography. Why would he bother with music? You see, when users of social media, like you and me, when we post music onto like Facebook or Instagram, those media platforms are obligated to pay royalties, which come out to roughly $100 million a year so far that, you know, Facebook or Instagram are paying. And uh, so far, Twitter has yet to pay up. I doubt they will. The Republicans in the House wanted Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff to pay up. About $16 million? Is that what they want? They wanted to fine him? I think, yes, yeah, $16 million. Uh, they wanted Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff to be censured for investigating Donald Trump's collusion with Russia during the 2016 presidential campaign. If you remember, Congressman Schiff served as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee back in 2019 is when he started, and he immediately launched an investigation into how Russian President Vladimir Putin and his cronies aided Donald Trump. Now, citing the Mueller report, Florida Representative Republican Anna Paulina Lunatic, I read that wrong, Luna, Anna Paulina Luna, she introduced a motion to censure Schiff, claiming he lied about Russian collusion, and she wanted Congress to fine him $16 million. The motion was rejected Wednesday by the Republican-controlled House after 22 Republicans joined Democrats in killing it. Here is Congressman Adam Schiff before the vote. You stand up to Donald Trump, they're going to go after you. But, uh, but honestly, I'm proud to have earned their enmity. Uh, as Franklin Roosevelt once said, you can judge a person sometimes by the enemies that they make. I've made some powerful enemies, uh, but I'm not backing down. He is now running, Adam Schiff is now running for 
Dianne Feinstein's Senate seat in 2024 in California. He wants the Democratic nomination. Donald Trump turned 77 on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Mr. Trump. I hope it's your last. <clears throat> of one not spent behind bars. I got something stuck in my throat. <clears> throat> Trump reportedly spent his birthday at his Bedminster, New Jersey golf course playing golf, surrounded by friends and family who secretly wish he'd go to prison already so they can get on with the rest of their lives. There are reports that since his arraignment on Tuesday, Donald Trump has raised an additional $2 million from his supporters. One of Donald Trump's biggest supporters is Sarah Palin, who was on Newsmas, Newsmax because Fox doesn't want her anymore. And she was asked on Wednesday whether or not MAGA Trump supporters were part of some cult. I was with the Trump motorcade yesterday, and I would say that the people at Versailles at the Cuban restaurant, I wouldn't call them cult members, would you? Uh, no, you know, the definition of a cult is uh, a, a group of people who are um, excessively supporting one another and a cause, all about conformity and compliance and intolerance of anyone who doesn't agree with what their mission is. Right. Of, co of course. There, there's one word that best describes a Trump supporter. It's tolerance. Trump supporters have an amazing tolerance for bullshit. Well, Tuesday night, after his arraignment in Florida, Trump flew back, as I said, to New Jersey and delivered a searing indictment of the Biden Justice Department. The only news network to carry his speech was Fox News. And at one point, Fox News ran a split screen of Trump and Biden speaking at the same time with a lower third that read, wannabe dictator speaks at the White House after having his political rival arrested. This was at, what, 8.30? 8.59 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday night on Fox News, prime time. Wannabe dictator, that would be Joe Biden, speaks at the White House after having his political rival arrested. Fox News, we report you take arms against your government. Eileen Cannon is the Florida judge who will preside over Donald Trump's trial, the trial uh, down in Miami. The, he's been indicted for mishandling government documents. The New York Times reported on Wednesday that Judge Cannon might be in over her head. Age 42, Cannon, a Trump appointee, has only been sitting on the bench since November of 2020. This is a lifetime appointment for someone who has never worked as a judge before and has had little to no experience presiding over a criminal trial. In fact, the New York Times reports that she has only presided over four trials for a grand total of 14 days, and all four of those trials were not complicated. Judge Cannon, if you remember, early on in this case, attempted to short-circuit the FBI's search of Mar-a-Lago by suggesting that Donald Trump had special protections as a former president. An appeals court later overruled her decision. Yesterday, I reported on the mayor of Florida, Francis Suarez. He's the Republican who is thinking of running for his party's presidential nomination. If you remember, I explained that Mayor Suarez is under investigation by both the FBI and the SEC for accepting $10,000 a month from a Southern Florida real estate developer. I didn't know that you could be the mayor of Miami and take $10,000 a month from a real estate developer or from anybody. I said that he's running for president as an insurance policy so that he could claim the prosecutions are politically motivated, something he learned from Donald Trump, right? If the FBI and the SEC is investigating you, run for president. Well, he must be guilty because on Wednesday, the mayor of Florida, Mayor Suarez, 
made it official he's running for president for his get out of jail free card. Let's take a look at where we are right now. These are the real clear politics averages. And we see Donald Trump has 52% is leading in the Republican for the Republican nomination. DeSantis has 22%. These are the national polls. Pence has five and Nikki Haley has three. That's the national averages uh, for the Republican nomination. But Iowa is what counts. And if I could show it to you, I would. Let's look at Iowa. In Iowa, the real clear politics averages show Donald Trump leading with 46 percent, Ron DeSantis with 25 percent, Mike Pence with only 4 percent, and Nikki Haley ahead of Mike Pence in Iowa with 5 percent. Let's go to New Hampshire and... We see that Donald Trump is leading with 41%, followed by Ron DeSantis with 23%. Sununu has 14%, but he's not running. And Ramaswamy has 4%, and he should be dropping out any day now. And let's look at the real clear averages polls for the general election in November of 2024. It doesn't look good for Joe Biden. The real clear averages show Donald Trump with 45% leading Biden by two points. Biden only has 43%. How is this possible? Let's look at a matchup between Donald Trump and Vice President Harris. And Trump gets 47% and the Vice President gets 43%. If something happens, God forbid, to Joe Biden and Vice President Harris has to run, Trump would beat her handily. What about Biden versus DeSantis in the general election? Well, DeSantis has been beating Biden in the general election for months. DeSantis gets 45% of the vote to Biden's 43%. And those are the real clear politics averages of all the polls. These are the polls today, however. The Quinnipiac general election poll for 2024 shows Joe Biden leading Trump 48 to 44. That's the Quinnipiac poll that was out on Wednesday. And the Economist YouGov poll shows a dead heat, 41% for Trump and 41% for Biden. Shouldn't be this close, should it? Biden's doing something wrong. The Democrats are doing something wrong. Shouldn't be this close. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. If you enjoyed any of this, please share it with your friends. Uh, via social media or through an email. Please like this episode and please subscribe to my channel. That's the best way to help me. The best way to help me is to share this video with your friends. That's the best way you can thank me for the show. Thank you to all the moderators in the chat room on YouTube right now for keeping the garbage out and and raising the level of discourse. I really appreciate that. Please subscribe to my newsletter. We do office hours every Friday night at 8 p.m. Go to my website for the link. Once again, I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.